All right, we go to section 1.4. Uh, um, all right, uh, this is um, a, a technical topic. Uh, which is, this tutorial is there so that you can refer back to it if you get stuck with something. But uh, there, let me give you an indication of what's in here. Static condensation is a process of eliminating unknowns from within an element. From within an element means if you have two finite elements, then in, on each element you have some certain degrees of freedom, and internal degrees of freedom do not communicate with internal degrees of freedom of the other elements. So those degrees of freedom, when you make up a matrix, will stand alone as individual blocks, which can then be eliminated. Okay, and this is important for, uh, for some, some methods, like HDG methods, for example. Uh, NGSolve has a way of doing this process across all methods. And, and the way it does it is through a classification of degree, degrees of freedom, and I want to show you that. And I would emphasize that over some of, some of the other, other things in this tutorial, including components of a factorization, a sure complement factorization, which is how you actually do the condensation. But all of these are, are available in the Python interface. If you wanted a component of the factorization, you can have them. And if you don't care about all of these technicalities, you can just go to the end of the tutorial and you find an automatic utility for condensing, condensation and, and you just say call solvers.bbb and that's that. You don't have to worry about anything. All right, so let's start by importing a graphical user interface. Everything from ng-solve, the unit square again, uh, this time with bottom and right as the Dirichlet boundary conditions. And this is the only keyword that you need to know. Condense equals true. Okay. Yeah. Condense and eliminate internal are the same thing. It, for in, in, in the previous years, we, if, you, if you're familiar with using eliminate internal in previous years, well, you could continue to use eliminate internal, but you could also use condense. Once you s set up this flag and say the condens equals true, then NGSolve knows that it must perform static condensation when it does uh, uh, the solution process. Okay. Okay, so what's going on behind the scenes? There are internal degrees of freedom or local degrees of freedom, which I'm calling L here, and the remainder, which is E. So the matrix can be block partitioned in, into this, th these blocks. The L blocks, the, the ALL block is a block diagonal matrix because it, these are the, internal, the local degrees of freedom, so it's very easy to invert. So if you, you can compute the Schur complement using this inverse, that's, that's this S, and when you turn on condense, instead of solving this big system, NGSolve will solve the, the Schur complement system. Okay. okay, so let's look at how exactly this is done. Everything is in this, in this one formula, which is uh, overflowing. Let me try to fit it in one page. Uh, oh, oh, it doesn't want to fit. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, it won't fit. Okay, so um, the components that you see here, there are three matrices here. This is a factorization of A inverse. Here's the matrix A. We take the inverse of this. You can write down the inverse in terms of the, uh, the product of these three matrices. Okay, in, the, in, the, in these three matrices, you have a, a block diagonal inverse, which is cheap. You have the Schur complement inverse, which which is the main uh, uh, the, uh, where all the main computations must happen. And, and in order to recover the solution, you also need these two matrices. Okay, all of these matrices are available using these names. This is how you access them from Python. If you want this matrix without the identity blocks, you, you call harmonic extension transpose. This is the harmonic extension without the identities, is the harmonic extension, this is the inner solve, and so on. Okay, so to compute the solution, you have to execute this formula. So first you apply this part, and that's done right here. F, the plus equals does the identity. 
this uh, multiplication by the identity is, done, is, is essentially implemented by plus equals. So that's the first step in, 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 the, in, in this formula. Okay, the next step is this, and that, that's done by a dot mad dot inverse. Now, the thing to realize is once you turn on condense equals true in a, then when you call a dot mad dot inverse, it's not inverting the full matrix, but rather the condensed matrix. In other words, this sure complement inverse. Okay. Okay. And the final step, oh, sorry, not, not yet the final step. Um, we have the inner solve, this part. Afterwards, this harmonic extension part, that's the, l the last of the, the products in the three product, uh, in the three term formula. And that gives us the solution. Okay, so uh, how does NGSolve know what is in the index sets L and the index sets E? It needs to know this for every problem. Okay, and the, 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 the description that, that I just gave is not just for the Poisson equation. This is th the same process that's used across across finite elements, across all finite elements. So the way NGSolve implements this is using something called coupling type of degrees of freedom. Every degree of freedom has a coupling type, and you can ask what is the what is the coupling type for a degree of freedom uh, in a finite element space. So you can print out all the coupling types, and you see that the coupling types are could be something called wire basket, it could be something called interface degree of freedom, it could be something called local degrees of freedom. So any person making a finite element space inside NGSolve should declare some degrees of freedom to be local if they want to do static condensation. And once you declare those degrees of freedom that you want to be eliminated as local, then that information is used in this, in this factorization business in, 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 in this formula. All right. Okay, so we can count up the degrees of freedom. It looks like in this case there are 75 interface degrees of freedom, 42 local degrees of freedom, and something called the wire basket degrees of freedom, which we'll see in detail when we talk about preconditioning. There are 12 of them. But in the, in the context of, of the sure complement condensation, only the local degrees of freedom matter. So here are... Uh, so this is, this is what's happening behind the scenes. Okay, now you can ask, how do you combine this with the non-homogeneous Dirichlet conditions? Uh, well, you can do all of that right here, or if you don't care about any of these, then you can just call the automatic utility BVP, solvers.bvp, give it a preconditioner, and, and it'll do all of this process. It, It'll first check if condense is turned on in A. And if condense is turned on in A, it will do the static condensation. 